As Arkansas's population grows, so do our energy demands. But with the right mix of resources, reliable, affordable power will always be a reality. These resources are all around us, in our rivers, blowing through our trees, even right below our feet. The answer isn't focusing on one resource, it's embracing them all. The electric cooperatives of Arkansas know that a balanced approach to power builds our communities and powers our dreams. Visit themixmatters.com and see why there's power in knowledge. It is a heavyweight battle, the marquee matchup, the Arkansas brawl, we're dubbing it. It's the cover story of our latest magazine edition of Talk Business and Politics. U.S. Senator Mark Pryor versus U.S. Congressman Tom Cotton in the biggest race in Arkansas in 2014 and one of the most closely watched Senate races in the nation as it may be pivotal to control of the U.S. Senate. Joining me to talk politics is David Ray. He's the communications director for Cotton for Senate and Eric Dory, deputy campaign manager for Prior for Senate, thank you both for being here this morning. I appreciate you. Thank you, Robbie. Good to be with you. Let's uh, talk a little bit before we get into campaign uh, mechanics here. Let's just talk about kind of the high-profile nature of this uh, this election, this campaign. You guys have like a national spotlight on you, not just the uh, state spotlight on you. Do you guys feel the pressure uh, in terms of all of those eyeballs and all of that national media attention that's going on? Well, it's a big race, not just for Arkansas. It's a big race for America. Um, most, most people uh, around the country feel that Washington's headed in the wrong direction, and so the 2014 midterms are a chance to change course and send some new folks to Washington who will begin to roll back the damage that's been done over the last five and a half years of the Obama administration. What about you? Are you feeling the pressure? Well, sure, there's pressure. I mean, you just heard David Ray talk a lot about Washington and about the national spotlight, but for Mark Pryor, this race is all about Arkansas and what's best for the state and putting Arkansas first. And the issues that matter to Arkansans and the issues that matter uh, to folks uh, that are, are trying to make ends meet here in Arkansas uh, are, are what we're focused on. And the contrast between Mark Pryor and Tom Cotton just couldn't be more clear. Well, we'll get some, to some of those contrasts. Let's start with some of the news of the week in terms of some things that had you guys volleying exchanges with one another. And for people that don't follow you guys on Twitter, they, they need to because it is entertainment in and of itself as well as very interesting political theatrics. Uh, Faith played a big uh, argument in the debate this week. Uh, we've got a quote here that shows something that, that Tom Cotton said about a little over a week ago uh, when he was talking about the Hobby Lobby decision, David. He talked about it's another example of how Obamacare infringes on the liberties of all Arkansans. Barack Obama, Mark Pryor, think that faith is something that only happens at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings. That's when we worship, but faith is what we live every single day. Tell me what Congressman Cotton was trying to say in that comment. Well, I think what we've seen is Senator Pryor take a lot of offense to what was said in a TV interview, but what he hasn't taken offense to is the fact that in this Hobby Lobby decision, we've, we've now been, it's been affirmed that Obamacare forces Christians to violate their deeply held religious beliefs. Uh, that's not me saying that, that's the Supreme Court of the United States saying that. What we haven't seen him take a lot of offense to is the fact that Obamacare forces Christian taxpayers to fund abortions, the fact that um, in America today, uh, an unborn child can be aborted even after they can feel pain at 20 weeks. Senator Pryor doesn't seem to be offended by any of that. I would suspect Senator Pryor has a different position. I see you shaking your head there. Yeah, so. yeah I mean, uh, it's, it's really unfortunate that um, Congressman Cotton chose last week to make such a deeply personal attack on Mark Pryor's Christian faith. If there's one thing Arkansans know about Mark Pryor, it's that he's a devout Christian, uh, someone whose faith guides him uh, to put Arkansas first and be a steady and reliable voice for Arkansans. And for Congressman Cotton to stoop so low as to question the sincerity of his faith is something that is, uh, you know, it's just beyond the pale. Was he questioning the sincerity of his faith? No, we've, Tom Cotton's been very clear from the beginning of this campaign that it's extremely admirable that Senator Pryor is a fellow Christian and that he practices his faith with commendable openness. But that's what this Hobby Lobby decision was about. It's about the role of religion and faith in the public sphere. And what Obamacare forces Christians to do is it says, you know, you can believe whatever you want on Sunday morning in your church, but don't you dare take that into the workplace the other six days of the week because uh, we're going to explain to you as a federal government which precepts of your faith you can follow and which ones we disagree with. Do you think that, that that leap, though, is made in terms of logic between a voter hearing that statement and then tying it to Obamacare in that way? I mean, set, set Obamacare aside for one second. Uh, 
Congressman Cotton called Mark Pryor a once a week Christian. He said that Mark Pryor believes that faith is something that happens only at 11 o'clock on Sunday mornings. And that's offensive. Um, and the fact that, that Congressman Cotton has not only refused to apologize, but doubled down on those comments and then just outright lied about Mark Pryor's record when it comes to uh, the very serious issue of abortion. Uh, Congressman Cotton has said that Mark Pryor supports late-term abortions and uh, federal funding for abortions. In fact, he's, uh, he supports neither. Um, he has voted consistently in the Senate uh, to ban late-term abortions and stop all federal funding for abortions. And it's something he feels strongly about. I want to, would love to keep talking about the subject. We've got other things to get to, so let's shift to disaster relief, another big area of combat between your two campaigns this past week. Um, this was kind of a political storm, no pun intended there. Mark Pryor has made an issue of five Congressman Cotton votes uh, related to uh, FEMA funding, disaster relief funding. Cotton campaign pointed out this week that there uh, have been three times that Congressman Cotton has supported uh, FEMA and disaster relief funding. Um, Eric, I'll ask you the question first. Is this a, a matter of the prior campaign being selective about which votes it wants to portray as, as accurate and inaccurate for Congressman Cotton? Absolutely not. I mean, the fact is that Congressman Cotton has voted consistently against disaster relief that has helped Arkansas families recover from devastating there storms. There were three votes where he did uh, cast votes I mean, we, for we, Yeah, let's take those three votes, um, one of which was about what never became law. The other was a stopgap measure uh, in, the, in the government shutdown that Congressman Cotton caused. Uh, he was one of that, that small minority of, of reckless and irresponsible House members that cheer-led the government shutdown. From his second week in office, Congressman Cotton went on a radio show and said, uh, I got the question, you know, if, if, if the, the Democrats are digging their heels and Republicans aren't getting what they want, are you prepared to shut down the government? And Congressman Cotton said, yes, I am. Right. Give me Congressman Cotton's, Cotton's perspective on this. Look, Tom Cotton supports full funding of FEMA. He supported it in the fiscal year 14, Department of Homeland Security appropriation. Eric wants to talk about bills not passing. Not much passes in Washington these days because Harry Reid and Mark Pryor won't allow anything to come for a vote in the Senate. You know, Senator Pryor and his allies for weeks have been, or months rather, have been politicizing these tornadoes that ripped through Mayflower and Valonia. And if we needed any further evidence of that this week, there's the fact that their campaign lied to and took advantage of a storm victim in Mayflower and for the purposes of filming an attack ad on his property. They, their campaign called this man, Mr. Boydston, and told him they were going to assist with cleanup efforts to remove debris. As a matter of fact, when they showed up, they did no such cleanup. In fact, they just filmed attack ads against Tom Cotton on his property. They lied to him. They misled him. That's not the Arkansas way. Lies and misleading. Strong comments. Yeah, there you go again, David. Um, it, it's absolutely false to say that Congressman Cotton supports disaster relief. He has voted every single chance he got. Uh, there is not a single dollar that is being spent today to help Mayflower or Valonia victims of, of this disaster recover that Congressman Cotton voted for. Uh, for appropriations. And when, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, everything else David said, this is, um, this is an important thing to point out because what, um, what, the, what Congressman Cotton's campaign has done this week is try to politicize and silence uh, the, the voice of the, of the mayor of Mayflower. Ma the mayor of Mayflower uh, is an independent. He's not a Republican, he's not a Democrat. And he has great things to say about Tim Griffin, about John Bozeman, about uh, Asa Hutchinson, Mike Ross, and Mark Pryor, who was there from day one with his sleeves rolled up, no cameras present, uh, helping to pack boxes and, and, and help these volunteers um, and bring every uh, dollar that could be brought to these, to these families to help them recover. But and most, Congressman Cotton was nowhere to be found. But, well, it wasn't in his congressional district. Why would he, what would, wouldn't he be politicizing well, and the, it and by the being up there? The important thing to remember <laughs> is that not only has Tom Cotton supported full funding of FEMA, he also supported all five disaster relief declarations for the tornado victims in Mayflower and Bologna. He supported numerous disaster declarations for Arkansas, whether it's ice storms, whether it's flooding. They're simply trying to distract from the fact using the Hurricane Sandy bill and overlaying that with footage of Mayflower and, and Bologna, which is insulting to the intelligence of voters. It's also insulting to the storm victims who are recovering. And you know what? These are important, weighty issues. And I know that it's good for Eric and I to get together to discuss them. But, you know, we really should have Mark Pryor and Tom Cotton here debating those issues and many more issues. But Senator Pryor refuses to back off his no debate position. 
and we've agreed to three televised debates. Now, I got to jump in there for a second. Um, what, what David is completely ignoring is the fact that Congressman Cotton uh, is, is, is desperate right now. And you've seen a series of, of news articles this week talking about how underwhelming and unimpressive Congressman Cotton is as a candidate. Um, and that's because what folks on, at the national scene are figuring out is what folks in Arkansas have already figured out is that Congressman Cotton just is not connecting. It's not that hard to get a story, though, planted in the national well, media, is what, it? Well, what I mean, is not yes, hard. Yes, we're so desperate that we've been ahead in the last seven polls conducted, <laughs> and Senator Pryor still refuses to debate. Pryor's got polls, too. Pryor's got polls, too. Uh, it, this is going to be a close race, but I want to go back for one second to something David said just a minute ago, uh, which is that, uh, that Congressman Cotton supports disaster relief. He, he does not and has not, and he has consistently made up excuses. And, and here, here's the best point to illustrate this, is that when, uh, when we put up on our website a video of the mayor of Mayflower, the justice of the peace of Faulkner County, uh, and other pillars of the community talking about Congressman Cotton's conspicuous absence in the wake of the storms and his votes against disaster relief, when do you think Tom Cotton showed up for the first time in Mayflower? It was just a few days later. I don't think you need any more. Story. I don't think you need any more evidence to prove that their campaign has been politicizing this tragedy than to look at what happened this week with Doug Boyston. The footage that he's referring to was ill-gotten footage that they recorded by lying to a man who has lost his livelihood in the storm, who has seen his property looted in the days following the storm, and they misled him. He has come out and said this publicly. He has been on radio, in print. He has said this over and over. And they, the only reason they removed that footage is because they were caught red-handed. I've got to get it out there, guys. We've got a time limit. I apologize. We will take a little bit more of this conversation online if you guys will stick around for just a few more minutes. You'll be do happy that? to. Sure. All right. I'm Robbie Brock. This is Talk Business. We're back with This Week in History. You can catch more of this debate online after the show at talkbusiness.net or katv.com. A farmer understands the needs of every season, and so do Farm Bureau members. When Arkansas families needed electricity, our members brought it. Reliable roads, our members built them. The agricultural education, our members provided. Today's members may not live on a farm, but their connections are as close as ever. So when that difficult season comes, no member has to face it alone. For every season, Arkansas Farm Bureau. Join today. Welcome back to this uh, Web Extra on Talk Business and Politics. We're with David Ray, Eric Dory from the Cotton Campaign, from the uh, Prior for Senate Campaign. Thank you both for being here. All right, before the break, before we ran out of air time, we were talking a little bit more about this whole Mayflower situation. The, the topic of conversation was politicizing a tragedy. Really aren't both of your candidates politicizing this tragedy and disaster? You're both making political hay out of it. Well, see, here's the thing, Roby, is uh, we, we've for over a year now been talking about Congressman Cotton's reckless and irresponsible votes against disaster relief. And the fact that the, the reason we've done that is because as Congressman Cotton doesn't seem to recognize, natural disaster, disasters can happen at any time. And it doesn't need, uh, you know, a, a regular appropriation for, uh, you know, for, for, the, for recovery. Uh, what, what he doesn't seem to realize, but what Mark Pryor realizes, is that when families are in need, we help them. And that's an essential role of the government. And uh, so the, re the reason we've been talking about this for, for well before this, this horrible disaster happened in Mayflower in Valonia, Arkansas, is because this is something that, that perfectly illustrates exactly how irresponsible Congressman Cotton has been. And the reason that he voted against these disaster relief uh, measures can't be overlooked. It's because his Washington special interest allies, the very folks that are funneling now of over $15 million into his political campaign to feed his political ambitions, they asked him to vote that way. And he went with them every single time. David. We're not politicizing this tragedy at all. Uh, I think that's very clear from the campaign that we've run. Uh, we have responded to some of the false attacks that their campaign has leveled, but we've not politicized this tragedy at all. You, you didn't see uh, Tom Cotton um, running ads with footage of the interstate where people literally died. Um, you didn't see our campaign um, going to a homeowner who saw his livelihood destroyed during the storm and lied to him in order to videotape on his storm-ravaged property. This, this is just something that should never be politicized. You also didn't see Congressman Cotton on the ground in Mayflower and Valonia in the, in the aftermath of the storm until they were called out for not having been there. 
and, 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 and that matters because Mark Pryor was there on day one, day three, day five, and, and, and repeatedly ever since packing boxes and helping these families recover. Where was Tom Cotton? Thank Asa you. Hutchinson was there. It's not his district. Tom Cotton was there every step of the way. And you don't, have, you don't have to listen to me. You can listen to the sheriff of Faulkner County. <laughs> he said, he's saying it on the television right now. All right. Let's move to another topic. I know we could sit here and talk about this for another half hour, and we're never going to find an agreement from you guys on this. So lots of key voting groups that you guys are uh, targeting and looking at. Independent voters are important. Women voters are important. I want to talk about the 65 and older crowd and how important that is to your base uh, in terms of voting. Over the last couple of years, over the last couple of election cycles, we have seen the 65 plus crowd vote with a bit of a Republican trend. That is where John Bozeman has won. That's where some of the other uh, Republican gains have come from. Yet there is a contention from the prior camp that, that they will stay with Mark Pryor in this, that they will pivot back from where they have been voting Republican in the past. Tell me how important the 65 plus crowd is to your vote and why your candidate is gonna win it. I'll start with you, David. Well, we're gonna win a hard fought race and we're gonna win it because we're gonna win seniors in this race. And seniors intuitively know that Obamacare is bad for Medicare, it's bad for seniors, the fact that it cuts $700 billion for Medicare, including two, over $200 billion for Medicare Advantage. You know, when, when we travel the state and visit with seniors, we hear it all the time. People whose Medicare Advantage rates are going up, they've lost a doctor from their network because of Senator Pryor's vote for Obamacare, and not simply because Senator Pryor voted for Obamacare, but, but he, because he continues to steadfastly support it no matter what. Not even in the wake of the Hobby Lobby decision, he will not uh, repeal any measures of Obamacare. He, our Kansans understand we need to start. We need to start over on health care reform, and implement health care reform that works for patients, uh, for their doctors, for individuals and families. Eric, not necessarily countering all of David's comments there, but but why is the over 65 crowd going to stay with Mark Pryor? Well, uh, the, the reason the over 65 crowd will stay with Mark Pryor is because he has consistently looked after what matters to Arkansas seniors. Medicare and Social Security is what provides a secure retirement for Arkansans. Uh, it's not a rich state, as, as you know, Roby, and as your viewers know. But the fact is that for so many Arkansans, all they have is Medicare and Social Security. And Tom Cotton has, has voted to raise the age for Medicare and Social Security to 70 years old, begin turning Medicare over to the insurance companies, and cut benefits for both, senior, for both uh, Medicare and Social Security. And so, uh, you know, when David wants to talk about what seniors intuitively know, it, it, I mean, let's talk about that. It's, it's about what matters to, to folks. That, that's all they have. And all I, I, I do have a question for David. Um, he, you know, he, he likes to, to, to demagogue and, and spout this, this very often, uh, you know, debunked talking point about cutting Medicare, uh, neglecting the fact that, of course, that what he's talking about in terms of the $700 billion that's are long-term savings. My question is, David, how many times has Congressman Cotton voted for those very same savings. Look, How many times has he voted to keep those very same savings to Medicare that you call cuts, um, but they're actually savings to long-term long -term, uh, Medicare programs? How many times? Tom has voted to keep that money in Medicare. And Eric keeps, wa keeps wanting to talk about raising the retirement age, raising this and that. Just two years ago, when he was not up for re-election, Senator Pryor said, the easiest way to fix Social Security, raise the retirement age to 68 or 69. And now he's attacking Tom Cotton for the exact same position he held two years ago. The difference between Tom Cotton and Mark Pryor, in an election year, Mark Pryor will not be honest with seniors. Tom Cotton will be honest with them all the time, not just in election year. But you know what? This is something that the two candidates should debate, and Mark Pryor won't debate. You know, public, public schedules show that Senator Pryor is going to be in Little Rock next Friday, July 18th. We could have a debate next Friday, July 18th, with Tom Cotton on one side of the table, Senator Pryor on the other side of the table. You could moderate it, Roby. We could do it right here in this studio if Senator Pryor would just agree. Senator Pryor will debate Congressman Cotton because, honestly, our Kansans deserve to know why Congressman Cotton has both misled and consistently voted against the best interests of families here. And so for David to say that Senator Pryor has ever supported cutting, uh, uh, raising the age for Social Security is completely false. He's on he, video. He, he has never supported raising the age for seven to, to, to Social he Security. Has suggested it as something he has to look suggested at. it as something that is one option, but he has never endorsed it. And the, Congressman Cotton voted to do this, and he voted to raise it to 70. 
and he voted to cut benefits. He voted with President Obama to cut benefits. And Mark Pryor stood up to both President Obama and Congressman Cotton to stop those cuts to Social Security. Right. Senator Pryor says he doesn't support the race in the retirement age for Social Security. Go to TomCotton.com slash facts and watch the video for yourself. As they say, when back when I was in uh, watching film in high school football, the coach would always say the tape doesn't lie. Right, you can well, watch it on video. I got to end it there. I got you gonna let them get a website plug? I got, I got, I got a website I'll plug? Get, give me a website plug. Pryforsenate.com. Go there. <laughs> TheRealTomCottonRecord.com. Here's, here's, what really, here's what I really want is I want you to, what's your Twitter handle? Uh, it's at Eric Dory, E-R-I-K, D-O-R-E-Y. What's your Twitter handle? At David A. Ray. R -A -Y. David's a much better Twitterer than I am. Uh, it's fine. People that need uh, entertainment. I just use more hashtags. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question. Uh, you guys hold hands with me, sing Kumbaya, just one verse. We could do that. Just with you, though? No, or? no, no. no. Okay. Maybe we could have a beer summit instead. <laughs> right. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us. That's our Web Extra. I'm Roby Brock. You can stay up to date on all the latest business and political news on talkbusiness.net, katv.com.